Hey friends, my name is Julie Faye Fan Balzer and I'm a painter, a printmaker, and a collage artist living outside of Boston. And I have a brand new class coming up. It's called Practical Color for Painters. Now last week I think I posted a description of this class on my blog. And in the monthly group coaching that I run, uh, one of the artists asked about the class after having seen the description of it. And I started talking about it and explaining what it was going to do and why I decided to teach it and all that kind of stuff. And she and a bunch of the other artists in the group all looked at me and said, well, that's not what you wrote in the description. And I was totally flabbergasted by this because I didn't realize that what I thought I was saying apparently isn't what I had written. Why I decided to make this video, because I wanted to talk to you about this, because maybe it turns out I might be better at talking than I am at writing. So let's see if I can get the entire idea of this class across to you and give you a little tip about color that might help you out. So first, let's talk about why I decided to offer this class. So one of the things that I know has been a point of frustration for so many of the students that I've taught has been color. People have color questions from simple ones like how much paint should I bring to class and what color should I bring to uh, are these the right colors, I only like these colors, or I see students struggle when I'm teaching design boot camp or other higher level classes because even though they've been making art for a long time, they haven't really thought deeply about color. Now, before I go any further, one of the most important things to tell you is that color is one of the things that artists study for a lifetime. There is actually, there's a wonderful quote from Monet. And he says, it's, I'm going to paraphrase here, but he essentially says that he wrestles with color every day, that it is a constant struggle for him. And Monet is one of the best users of color, you know, on earth that has ever been. But it is something where color affects us when we look at things. There's a psychology of color. So color theory is something that people can study for years, for a lifetime. There are artists whose entire careers have been dedicated to color. And so one of the reasons I called this class practical color for painters is because I really wanted the lessons to be practical and not theoretical. There's enough theory for you to understand the why of it so that you can sort of make extrapolations and get there. But there's tons of practical stuff, exercises you can do, um, things to try, suggestions, you know, all sorts of tips that you can really put into practice right away. And so the next thing is why it's called for painters, you know, why is it not practical color for artists? And the answer is you have to be someone who mixes paint, right? And then, so the shorthand for that was painters, but it could be a printmaker who mixes paint. It could be a gelatin printmaker. It could be someone who does mixed media collage where they paint their own papers. In general, I'm teaching using acrylic paint. And so anybody who uses acrylic paint will get a lot out of this class. Okay, so why? Because I saw people struggling and I wanted to find a way to help them. So practical, because that's what it is. It's absolutely something that is like, put it into practice right now. And then for painters is because you have to be someone who mixes paint because we're gonna be doing a ton of that. Wait a second, so is this a color just about mixing paint? Ah. I'm so glad that you asked that question. Mixing paint is a big part of this. And actually the tip that I'm gonna give you at the end of this video about color is actually about mixing paint. But mixing paint is really about achieving a particular color. And color is the focus of this class. I really mean how colors make you feel, the psychology of color. Can you develop a personal color palette? How colors interact with each other? What it means to work within a value scale? What are some things you can do to get better at you know, creating the value structure of your work? Uh, what are some color terms you might know? You see hue, chroma, saturation, cool colors, dark colors, neutral colors. Why do we need neutral colors? Like all these color things, these color ideas, these color concepts, my goal is to help you master it. As you can probably tell from everything I've said, I'm a passionate teacher, I've been a teacher for years, and one of the things I've learned is that people need time. Especially with a really big subject, I mean, you need a lot of time to process, you need a lot of time to practice, 
and frankly, life comes up. You get sick, your partner gets sick, your kid gets sick, you um, have an emergency at work, your um, whatever it is, like something happens in your life. You're moving, you have a vacation, who knows what it is. And so the class doesn't work for you because things are just compacted in a way and you sort of never finish it. Raise your hand if you're part of the club of people who've taken online classes with all the good intentions and never finish them. Ooh, I'm raising my hand so high. And can I make a confession right now on camera? I have actually bought a really expensive class and never even started it because the me who bought it was not the same person as the me who needed to do the work. But that's one of the reasons that I really wanted to take this class, spread it out over a year. So there's one class every two months. So that means that you can have the class and work on it for two months, right? In order to gain the skills, do all the homework, try all the exercises and make it to the next class where you'll build on top of the earlier skills you learned. Now the format is also kind of interesting and it's again, based on feedback from my students about what they like, what works for them, what's useful, all that kind of stuff. So each class is a two hour Zoom. Now during that Zoom class, it's a mixture of pre-recorded demos where I fast forwarded some of the kind of boring bits um, and time to ask questions, some in-class exercises, some PowerPoint slideshows, so you can see what's happening, but the two hours is used really well. There's not a lot of, you know, sitting around sort of boring time, it's an intense class. After the class, the recording of the Zoom is posted. All of the videos that were demos in the class are posted. I post real-time versions of all of the demos that I fast-forwarded. So if you're a person who wants to go slowly and work with me, you can. Can you tell that I've taught a lot of classes and I've met people who like it slow and people who like it fast? So this class is trying to mix both of those for you. Each month, you also get um, worksheets to download and to print out. You also get a book recommendation about color books that I have found useful and I think you might find useful. Um, and in the online classroom, there's a comment section, sort of like on a blog, where you can ask questions, you can also share links to your own work, all that kind of stuff. So it's a really comprehensive experience and yet I think very, very doable. My goal is for you to succeed, right? And so I've tried to do everything I can to set you up for success. So now we get into the nitty gritty of what are you gonna take away from the class? So I have an endlessly long list of things that I've written in the class description, which you can check out at ballsresigns.com. But the really quick version of it is, you're gonna have you know a strong facility with all sorts of color terms. You're gonna absolutely know how to make, use, and the whys of a color wheel. You're gonna understand color schemes, how to see them, create them, use them. You're gonna understand value structure, what that means, how you can best use it. They'll have lots of tools and exercises to help you make better choices when you're making your artwork. You'll start to develop a cohesive personal palette. Speaking of cohesive, you'll learn to build a cohesive palette and a sophisticated palette. And you'll learn to desaturate colors to create neutrals and all sorts of great stuff like that. I mean, there's so much more. I could go on and on and on. This class really is packed with tons of great information. So now let's get to the color tip that I was going to give you. This is a quickie, but it's a goodie. Perhaps it's just the universe telling me something, but I'm going to pass this on to you. I have spoken to um, two or three professional artists in the last month who all said the same thing. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that this is a very common thing that people run into. So one person, it was during a lecture. Another person, it was during a one-on-one -on -one, uh, crit that I had. And a third one was someone who I went to see their opening. And all of them said the following. If you're using your paint straight out of the tube, people can tell and it makes your work look clunky and unsophisticated. Simply by mixing your own colors, it will elevate your work and make it look more sophisticated. This is my bin of colors that I am currently working with, my sophisticated palette. Um, and in the class, I'm gonna show you how to make your own, how to change it up, how to keep it, how to keep track of it, all that kind of stuff. So I hope you will join me for Practical Color for Painters. There is an early bird special until the end of the month. So be sure to check that out for 25% off, which is a pretty big discount if you ask me. You can find it all at balzerdesigns.com. As always, I appreciate you joining me for these two visits and I'm excited to share with you whatever's next.